What's up guys, and welcome to my first ever 3-man guide. Today, I'll be showing you how to 3-man King's Fall. Before we begin, I'd like to shout out my friend Nuo. He was a huge inspiration to this, so check out his channel for his quality guides. Let's start with class composition. I recommend running two warlocks and one filler class. For the filler class, I recommend running a hunter. Hunters have amazing utility because of the debuff grenades and smokes. Not to mention their insane damage with Star Eaters and Golden Gun. Now onto the entrance. For the entrance, your team will start out normally. Pick up the balls and deposit in the first totem. After that, head to the portal area and split off into each direction, with the filler class staying in the middle. The right side player will pick up the ball and head towards the spawning platforms to carry the ball back to the middle. Once you head to the middle, head on over to the totems and dunk the ball. The left side player will start off by picking up the ball and heading toward the blighted door. Once up the ramp, head to the left where you see a pillar below you. Jump onto the pillar and then onto the main middle platform and take the ball to the totems. Repeat this until the portal activates and you've made it past the entrance. Now onto the totems encounter. At the start of the encounter, you'll break out into two separate groups, the duo side and the solo side. The solo player is in charge of the left side plate and prevents it from wiping the encounter. As you see here, when the annihilator totem debuff appears on the bottom left of the screen, I immediately sword swing and blink over. Once on the plate, wait around 8 seconds and you'll hear the totem clink. When you hear that, immediately swing and blink back to the stairs and repeat the process. For the solo side loadout, you need to have equipped an eager edge sword. I recommend using Heritage for quick night kills and Trinity Ghoul for great ad clear. Make sure you run Controverses for fast grenade recharge rate and Devour for survivability. As you're going back and forth between plates, you should try to kill as many enemies that are blocking you from the plate. Eager Edge tracks to literally everything, so try to kill any enemy that you think will be in your path. Here's a full rotation of the solo side. When the encounter starts, one player will grab the brand and head over to the right side plate, while the other player stands in the middle to kill the wizard and knight for the brand sealer. For each rotation, the player who has the brand should get between 16 and 20 Death Singer's power. If you get too much Death Singer's power, you may spend too much time depositing your stacks, making it very tight to steal the brand. Or worse, you won't have enough time and the other player dies. When you're going into the middle, you should kill the wizard while standing on the middle plate. You should also be mindful of the unstoppable ogres. The unstoppable ogres will spawn at Death Singer's power 50, 100, and 150. Their laser beam can melt you very quickly, so it's important to deal with them as fast as possible. 
Since the Unstoppable mods will change in the future, I recommend looking at a more recent clear that somebody has uploaded so you can see what they are running. But here's what I recommend. You should be running a Trinity Ghoul with Eager Edge and whatever unstoppable weapon is available for the season. If you're on Solar, I recommend Sunshot because of the ability to reproc Restoration with Ember of Empyrean. Alright, that was a massive information dump. Let me paraphrase. For the solo side, you bounce back between the stairs and the totem. When you see the Annihilator debuff, you go to the totem, and when you hear the clink, you go back to the stairs. Repeat this for roughly 5 minutes and you are done with the encounter. For the duo side, get between 16 and 20 Deathsinger's power. Head to middle, deposit your stacks, kill the wizard and knight, steal the brand, kill the unstoppable ogres when it spawns, and repeat the process until you've filled up the wall to 200 stacks. Here is a rotation from the duo side. All I need to do is just like do a full cycle. Now for the War Priest. This encounter will play out like how you're used to. Kill the adds, and then kill the knight that unlocks the plate. Since it's hard to rely on ammo RNG, I recommend both warlocks go to the left and right sides with Aeons equipped for heavy finishers. For this encounter, you can use any special and primary weapon, but I recommend using a kinetic slug shotgun like Heritage for weakening the knights and wizards. For damage phase, I will go over two damage strategies. The first is to run linear fusion rifles. Both of the warlocks should run Supreme Wallmaker with Cataclysmic. The filler class should run Stasis, Reads Regret, four Font of Might mods, and one Elemental Time Dilation. At the start of each damage phase, one of the two players who don't have the brand should stay and look for the Taken Knight. For example, if the first knight spawns on the left side, the left side player should stay and kill the knight before heading to damage. Once the first brand has been stolen, another player should go look for the second knight. Here's one of our damage phases using linears. Left. I'll get the first knight. I'll get the second knight. We know when you kill him. I just killed him. It's on the right side. Yep. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Henry? We'll go to the right plate. Four, three, two, one, let's go. Now for the next damage strategy. For this damage rotation, you will be using rockets. 
Start off the encounter like how I explained. Both of the warlocks will go to the left and right sides with Aeons for heavy finishers. Right before the damage phase starts, both of the warlocks should swap to Starfire Protocol with the Touch of Flame aspect. One of the warlocks should run Galahorn, while the other runs a good hothead. The filler class should run a tractor cannon for a debuff. If the filler is on a hunter, they should run star eaters with golden gun. If the filler is on a titan, they should run thunder crash with storm grenades. If the filler is on a warlock, they should run well with fusion grenades. Once damage starts, head to the top right area of the map. Place a well and start firing rockets. Make sure you have somebody grabbing the brands and heading back to the well. In terms of damage, this strategy is much better than Linear's, but it's harder to grab the brands since you have to run around a lot. Here is one of our damage phases. Alright, the, the font is all the way in the back. Yeah, I see a Nexus right night. Yep. Let me know, count it down. Count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This is so much better damage, except I fall off. Oh, um, go. That was my bad. That's still. Next up is Golgoroth. For the Golgoroth encounter, you will have two people grabbing the gates. The other player will do most of the damage. I recommend the loadout of the player who isn't grabbing the gates to run Cataclysmic 1 Font of Might mod, 1 Explosive Well Maker, 1 Well of Life, Seeking Wells, and 1 Elemental Time Dilation mod. Well of Life is a great mod choice because you won't always have a source of healing down in the pit. For a kinetic, you should run a Wither Horde to generate solar wells and have all around great ad clear. For an energy weapon, you can use anything, but preferably something that can proc bait and switch easily, like an SMG. For the gaze grabbers, I recommend one player use Succession, a primary energy, and a tractor cannon for a debuff. For the other gaze grabber, they can run either Arbalist or Succession, an energy primary, and Cataclysmic. During the fight, the gaze grabbers will alternate between each other and briefly damage the boss before needing to grab the gaze again. Make sure you get any and all unstable light explosions off because they do up to 500k damage. In summary, for this encounter, clear adds until the poison sack spawns. One person does damage and the other gaze grabber will wait until it's their turn to be the gaze holder. Repeat this each phase until you've killed the boss. Here's what a damage phase would look like. Thing forgiven, you could grab it. Okay. Only another time. You're in the wrong site. Forgiven. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Got deleted. Sorry, I should have shot the um thing before. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I can well. Yes. N nine eight seven six five four three two. One. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Return. Ten, nine. 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I almost killed you on accident. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now for the daughters. Start off the encounter by shooting the glowing knight. One player will then go over to the plate and call out the second one. The torn player will then proceed to hop from one plate to another to grab the blight guard. It is each player's job to find out where the new plate is and call out where the second one spawns. Once you get all three blight guards, grab the aura from one of the daughters and start your damage phase. I recommend both of the Warlocks to run Rockets. One Warlock should run a Hothead, a Succession, and Forbearance. The other Warlock should run Gallahorn, a Sniper, and a Forbearance for Ad Clear. The Filler class should be on Void for debuff grenades, and if they are on a Hunter, they can use their Tether and Smokes. Note that you have infinite phases in this encounter, so even if you have a bad damage phase, it's fine because the bosses won't enrage. Now that you've made it through all of King's Fall, you have one final encounter ahead of you. You'll start off the Oryx encounter like normal, kill the Taken Thrall and Knights, and wait for Oryx to slam his fist. Instead of immediately hopping on the plate, kill all of the Light Eater Ogres and Knights so you don't ruin any of your bombs. After killing them, you are safe to jump on the plate. After grabbing the third Blight Guard, you will have around 15 seconds left over, so it's important to move as fast as possible so you aren't late to detonating the bombs. For a loadout, I recommend both of the Warlocks to use a Font of Might build with Cataclysmic. You should run three Font of Might mods, one Elemental Time Dilation, and one Elemental Ordinance or Melee. The filler class should be on Void to proc a debuff and any linear of their choosing. Running a Taipan with Font of Might might do more damage, but it isn't necessary. For the first damage phase, you will only have three bombs available to you. While you are waiting for Oryx to call to the darkness, one of the Warlocks should throw a grenade into the middle and create a Font of Might well. Once Oryx calls to darkness, step in the Blight and begin your damage phase. Once damage ends, repeat the process up until you detonate the bombs. Please. Get ready, get ready. Cool. Go. For the second phase, the bomb that you didn't detonate in the previous phase should have two bombs inside of it, so instead of detonating three bombs, one player should alternate to the blight with two bombs inside of it for a result of four bombs detonating instead of three. After each phase, alternate blights so you consistently detonate four bombs after the first phase. Once you reach final stand, you should detonate one bomb at a time. I recommend the player with the least amount of ammo to detonate the bombs so the person with more ammo can deal more damage. As long as you have decent ammo RNG, you should be good for the kill. Now in summary, start off the encounter by killing the knight and thralls. Wait to step onto the plate until all of the light eater ogres and knights are dead. Grab all three blight guards and create a font of might well. 
For the first phase, you will detonate 3 bombs, and for the second, third, and fourth, you will have 4 bombs. Here's our second phase. Reload all your guns. I have heavy everywhere. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Go on left side somewhere. Perfect. Pop that, makes, that makes my life really easy with the bombs. Apparently, you can just worry about knights. Which bomb did you get last phase? Top right. I'm getting top left. This All night, or all ogres are dead. Just a night left. I'm gonna get on plate. Top left, going to bottom left. You need to hop on. Yeah. You can get off. Top right, start. Somebody has to go to it. I'm torn. Somewhere. Top right. I'm gonna get the call and jump on. It's bottom left. Somebody else has to go to top right now. I got top right. I'm going up bottom left currently. Yeah. And I have to go top left. Yeah. I'll take the top right bomb. Actually, no, I won't. No, don't. I'm gonna take, take the bottom right, right bomb. Okay, yeah. I want to make a well in there. Yeah, well, yeah. Get ready, Guardians. Go in. And there you have it, you've beaten Trio King's Fall. If you like the guide, liking the video and subscribing helps a whole lot. I've got more guides coming in the future, so you don't want to miss out.